So, further in the saga of the Equifax hack, which has found a really popular topic among security people and among everyone who's affected, which is about 140 million people where we're trying to sort all this out, uh, the Apache Foundation issued a media alert. The Apache Software Foundation confirms data breach due to failure to install patches provided for Apache Struts exploits. Now, they're confirming which vulnerability this was and that they didn't patch. Now, this is really where we can all sit back and be uh, armchair pundits who just say, yeah, they should have done this and they should have done that. But as someone who works in IT will tell you, patching is a lot of work. Now, we deal with just patching a lot of Windows servers and applications for our clients, but you go a step further when you talk about a patching uh, like the struts. They have to test and validate all the code written on top of it. So it's a non-trivial task. It's not like they just, oh, let's just click an update, like a Windows update like we're used to. It's a lot more in depth. But that being said, doesn't mean there's not ways to mitigate this. So the patch is not necessarily smoking gun to say that the company has an, a major failure that, oh, they didn't patch. The question is what other countermeasures did they have in place and were those bypassed as well? For example, you can put things in front of your application called a web application firewall. We use this, an example of this would be like the WordFence security we use on WordPress. Uh, it kind of, so to speak, can buy you some time if it's properly done, properly configured, where if there's an exploit for a web application, the web application firewall will look for that pattern and go, no, no, I know this pattern of attack and this vector uh, is to try to exploit something that isn't patched and it can stop at the firewall. That is a method of threat mitigation. So we really don't have the details on what really went down. And I'm hoping there really is a full disclosure of what happened at the Equifax hack, because there's a couple things that we really don't have a whole grasp on. One is the countermeasures, two, a flaw in struts was maybe the original breach point, but what allowed them the lateral movement throughout the network to get all the other information that the people were able to get once inside. That's actually where it becomes interesting because once they get and breach the firewall, get through the first layer, there should be a series of layers and alerts going on that will get you in touch with, you know, uh, what's going on. So they, sh what did they do to mitigate? How did it take them so long to find out that they were breached? Uh, were there other vulnerabilities exploited once they were inside for other unpatched things? The, until we really have these answers, we can't pass full judgment. Now, I'm not saying I, I have some faith that Equifax did everything right and this was a freak accident. Uh, Security is really, really hard and I'm hoping they dedicated a lot of resources to it, but we're not sure. But on that same topic, this came up. So this was on the publicly viewable side. And if you uh, put in, and I, I tested again, that's why I got a screenshot because it's now removed, but this is the 2012 uh, Equifax SOC Type 2 report. Now the SOC reports, you generally have three levels of them, SOC 1, 2, and 3. You can Google get some of the details on these, uh, but they're operational audits uh, performed and your type 1 is for internal use, type 2 may be shared between vendors, can be public, and then your type 3 is like for, I believe, like the shareholder snap. Not an expert on that, you can Google and get some of the information, uh, but what they are is uh, operational audit reports. And we'll talk about that. So there, there is a copy and I'll leave a link below because if it's on the internet once, it's going to always be on the internet. And what it is, it's got an assessment of all the different systems provided by KPMG and like audits of them. Uh, no relevant exceptions accepted is some of the things it said because it would look at a control system they have and they would audit that control system. And there's some details in here, but we're going to go jump right to page 54. But I said, I'll leave a link so you can read the whole thing. So these are kind of the uh, real problems with the systems they found. So out of 2,188 terminations, so they, uh, during the time, this is 2012, so this is an older report, and um, I didn't see any newer ones available, but it could be that they fixed all these problems. It could be that this is systemic of the company. Once again, I'm kind of armchairing you here, but these are actual results for problems they found. Uh, five from population of 2,188 terminations were identified with enabled accounts in ACRO. Now, each of these acronyms is a different system uh, highlighted above to uh, tell you what it does in there. But this is kind of a problem when you talk about a company that terminated uh, external contractors, but did not terminate their accounts. And this is often how uh, lateral movement occurs inside the company is they needed to get 
past the firewall to get in, but then they needed some type of credentials. And if you have a disgruntled person that was fired and they're like, well, all you have to do is breach the firewall, they probably didn't delete my credentials, that could be another attack vector. So this is a little speculative, well, a lot speculative, but it's conceptual as to how it may have happened. And this is kind of discerning, discerning here to think that, or concerning, uh, to think that nine terminated users from a population of uh, 21, 2,180 terminations were identified as an able to count with the PSOL and the CMS app. It, even one of them is all it takes to get this in there. Now, there was only one interactive directory, but the fact that there's a disconnect here, and hopefully this was all changed, could mean they didn't have a full uh, federated access system that propagated through Active Directory. And what that means is uh, you can have systems, so you put the Active Directory and everything else syncs up to it. So you have a common system. So if I delete someone out of just Active Directory, it goes and deletes them out of all the systems. And the same thing, you know, it's credentials management. So I don't have all the details in that, but I'll leave this below. And it does have some information here about, uh, you know, the, the flaws that they found in here. So two users previously disabled uh, were incorrectly re-enabled concerning. And this is on page 55 of this. If you didn't want to read the whole thing, you could just jump in there. But Nonetheless, these are some of the concerns. Uh, this is interesting that they didn't patch, we, but we don't know all the countermeasures that they had set up in front. And I'm really awaiting the details because understanding the details of how a large company got hacked is also helps us to understand the details of how smaller companies can also protect against it too, because smaller companies are getting hacked at a much higher rate than Equifax. It's just not newsworthy enough uh, to anyone to put on there. When a, when a small five person office uh, didn't patch something and gets hacked, they're barely a blip in the radar. You'll find some sysadmin in a forum going, oh my gosh, my system was hacked. But you're not likely to find much more information than that, which is why I'm trying to work on compiling stories and talking about this because this is a real threat to the small businesses and it's just not making the news because, well, the media is looking for clicks. And I tell you, they're getting a lot of clicks off of this, but it is a very serious problem with the Equifax. Uh, so those are my thoughts on it of uh, where we're at with the Equifax now and, you know, like I said, don't just armchair it and say vulnerabilities. It's concerning and it's uh, something we're going to keep a watch on. I'm going to keep reading about this because it's, well, it's interesting to read and it probably directly affects me seeing as I have a credit score and probably Equifax has that. So uh, if you like to kind of here, like and subscribe and thanks for watching.